So mindfulness is the first section in DBT. And I actually studied a lot of meditation in my year, early years, and I could never quite get it right. I didn't know if I was supposed to chant, if I was supposed to sit still, what it was I was supposed to do until I found DBT. And I can tell you that um, being mindful um, was something that I grasped right away, and it's something that all of my clients grasp right away too. Um, being still is something that they have a really hard time with. So I tell my clients if they're going to be mindful and they're going to actually watch their own thoughts, to just start out with two minutes of that. Most of my clients tell me that they are so empty on the inside that sitting by themselves without being entertained by the TV or someone else feels extraordinarily painful. So that empty hole inside of them is just a reminder of how painful it is for them. So um, two minutes is all it needs um, to start with a particular exercise. Um, we describe things differently um, than we observe them. When you describe something, you're actually putting a label on it. When you observe something, you're actually just feeling it and sensing it. So if I'm outside, um, and the sun is shining on me, and I'm walking along the beaches of the Caribbean, and I feel that water on my feet, and I feel the sand between my toes, and I feel the sunshine on me, and I'm just listening and just observing in a quiet morning, that's different than describing something. We're very quick to describe things and put labels on things because that's what our brain does. It's supposed to do that, and we have a file for everything that we do. So for example, um, if I say the word tree, you have a file in your brain that opens up and you see a tree. It's kind of like seeing a pink elephant. See how, switch, how quickly you can switch files? Pink elephant, tree, pink elephant, tree, pink elephant, tree. You know, just switch back and forth every time I say it. So the interesting thing, though, is that I didn't tell you what tree. So you have a tree, a particular kind of tree, that's popped into your brain. We do that every day as we're driving along and somebody cuts us off. Okay? And we begin to swear, okay? And call people names and do all the rest of that stuff that we do when we're inconvenienced um, because we label everything. So instead of saying, um, I was driving along and somebody passed me at a high rate of speed, cut in front of me and got inches within my front bumper, um, we just say that he's an asshole. <laughs> it's much, much faster, right? That's what we do. So what I want you to think about doing is that we actually teach our clients to stop doing that. Okay? We want them to describe things in just the facts. Because remember, they're stuck in their story. So their story from years and years ago influences the way they see things today. So we want to just have the facts when people describe things to us. And that's why people get really, really good at shortening their story up a lot, because I just accept the facts and not their opinion of the facts. So for example, um, if I go to the supermarket and I pick up fish and I smell the fish, um, I say to myself in my head, the fish is bad. This fish is bad. Fish can't be bad, folks. It can be rotten, it can be full of bacteria, it can be a lot of things, but it can't be bad. Okay? So that's how we start to change the dynamic of their thinking so that they use their prefrontal cortex and not their emotions to describe everything. Okay? Now the other thing is we teach them to participate fully in a particular event. Um, you know when you've read a good book that you lose track of time and space. You ever sit down to read something that was really, really good and you look up two hours later and you go, oh my gosh, where's the time gone? So there are certain activities that we ask them to th be thinking about. So for example, take a shower and what do you wash first? What do you wash second? Where do you start? Everybody has the same pattern. We do it over and over and over again. We're not consciously making a choice. It's kind of like walking and talking and um, chewing bubble gum, okay? We can do all of that simultaneously. We do the same thing in the shower. And then if we're distracted in the shower, I want you to know that there's a scientific study that shows that 85% of the time, if we're distracted in the shower, we forget to wash something. <laughs> I'll let you choose whatever it might be, okay? So um, ever grab the conditioner instead of the shampoo? Sprayed something underneath your arms <laughs> other than deodorant, okay? That's when we're not being conscious. 
That's when we're not observing our own thoughts, and that's where we're going through some kind of rote memorization in our head, but we're thinking about something else. So we actually teach people to keep their focus on what it is that they're doing. That's what you want, to be able to participate in something fully, something as simple as washing the dishes. So I tell my clients washing dishes by hand can be a very good thing, um, because again, it's going to teach you to wash dishes and not think about the dog, the cat, the kids. Not, don't think about the bills. Just wash the dishes. I want you to feel the soap. I want you to smell the soap. I want you to feel the water on your skin. I want you to, again, figure out, do you wash the plate front to back, back to front, left to right? How do you do it? Because we all have a way that we've done it before. So we want you to start observing your own thinking. And when it wanders off, I just want you to bring it back. I don't want you to bring it back and then say to yourself, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. Okay, because that's not helpful and it's not a fact. So I want you to then bring it back to what it is that you're doing. And you may have to do that a hundred times a day. If your mind is used to wandering off willy-nilly and just thinking about whatever, then again, it will take you longer to bring it back. And we just want you to gently bring your mind back to what it is that you're doing. One of the things that we don't teach anymore is we don't teach the ability to concentrate. Okay? Now, when I was a little girl and I was in church, you, were, it was a, you, you had to sit still. We don't teach that much anymore. Okay? So we have to, again, be able to teach people to focus their mind to focus their attention back to the center and when we do that then people can actually use that prefrontal cortex instead of the limbic system of their brain to make all their decisions your reptilian part of your brain does not make good decisions your prefrontal cortex is what's supposed to make decisions and if your mind is just randomly wandering off you're not going to make good decisions so bringing that back to center is really, really important. And the first way that we do that is we tell people to, again, taking hold of your mind is the how skill. There is actually a way to do that. You do it non-judgmentally, where you don't evaluate absolutely everything. Okay? Unless you've been asked to evaluate something, you don't have to evaluate everything. You don't have to evaluate the woman behind the counter at Walmart. You don't have to evaluate the guy that drove in front of you. You don't have to evaluate any of that, and you can unglue your opinion. Now, when you unglue your opinion, I tell my clients, you can be right or you can be happy. Which would you like? Well, I want both. Tell them, sorry. You can be right or you can be happy. Because if I'm right, you have to be wrong. How many of you like being wrong? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. My clients don't like being wrong either. So I'm always very conscious about that as I'm trying to teach a new concept, as I'm trying to get them on board for something that's new, is I don't want them to feel wrong and I don't want them to feel like a failure, okay, because then they're in emotional mind. They're not in logical mind. They're in emotional mind then. And they're not going to take on any new information if they're in emotional mind. That's the bottom line. So somewhere or another, I have to get them back into their prefrontal cortex so we can have insight, hindsight, and foresight, which none of my clients have. Okay? We do things one mindfully. That multitasking thing that was really popular in the 80s, we found out didn't work very well. And we know that because once we got computers, and somebody put, my boss you know, is a baboon, and they hit reply all, on the button, <laughs> that that didn't work very well. Okay? So now we're very aware that multitasking isn't such a good idea. And what DBT focuses on mostly is this very bottom box here about um, what's effective. So I tell my clients that, again, um, with therapy, and medication, by the way, lamectal and lithium are number one and number two still for bipolar disorder, um, that they can actually start turning on their prefrontal cortex and they can actually start living more effective lives. Um, because there has to be some balance 
And that's what DBT is all about. Is it is about that balance. So we focus on what works, not about what's right or wrong. We play by the rules. We act as skillfully as we can. We keep our eye on the objective, and that's not on my problem. Okay, if I keep my eye on my problem, I just get more problem. The idea is to keep my eye on my objective so that every step I take moves me to that objective, not back to the problem. And I let go of vengeance, useless anger, and righteousness that hurts me and doesn't work. Now, all of my clients like vengeance, anger, and righteousness. There's not a one of them that does not in some form or another, okay? And I tell them, you can start with eight minutes of quiet silence to be able to get your thoughts in order, but two minutes works. So as you sit quietly for two minutes, the only thing you have to do is watch your thoughts. So as I've talked to you today, okay, You've evaluated what I've got on. You've evaluated my hair. You've evaluated my glasses. You've evaluated how I've moved. You've absolutely evaluated everything. You've evaluated the slides, the room, your comfort in this room, whether or not you like this chair okay, that you're sitting in. You've evaluated all of that. Okay? All of that is your opinion. Some of it will be fact, and some of it will not be fact. But you've evaluated all of that. And I'll bet the most of you don't realize that as I've talked about this, that you've been doing all that evaluation in your head at the same time. You're not aware of that because you haven't been trained to be aware of that. Now, if you were really and in, truly interested in the slides, what you would do is as you made those evaluations and as you thought about those things and about whether or not you have to pick up the kids and what they're doing and what, did somebody let out the dog and, oh, my God, did I leave the coffee pot on, you would then say to yourself, okay, I can have that thought and I can gently bring it back here to this moment, to this time right now. And if I gently bring that thought back, then again, I will be using my, free my prefrontal cortex and I will be making a choice to be able to do that. Does anybody have any questions about mindfulness and how it works in emotional regulation? I do. Okay. So are you asking people to do this in the quiet of their homes? Does the, the location matter? No. Nope. Location. Car? You can do it in the car. Um, in fact, I would prefer that people actually do it in the car because we'd have a whole lot less accidents. <coughs> Ever be thinking about, you know, something that happened at home or at work and be driving down the freeway going <laughs> and miss the exit? Yeah, that's because you weren't in the moment, right? So, because if you'd have been in the moment, you wouldn't have missed the exit. You'd have been in the car driving, paying attention to the road signs, everybody else, and you would have gotten off on the correct exit. Now, most of us have done that at least once in our life, okay? So again, as we practice being mindful, we actually practice, again, living in the, in the moment. We live where we're supposed to be in this moment. I'm not living about what happened at the office or about the fight that I had with my kids or my husband or that my dog you know, threw up right before I left and whether or not I was going to need to get the laundry done and all of that clutter that happens all the time. Okay. And if I'm not thinking about that, and I'm not thinking about my story over and over and over again about how my life sucks, then I'm not an emotional mind. And then I can start actually making some good decisions. Any questions?